So I went and recorded this whole video about foliage. And it's like, I swear, as soon as I get done, uh, they come out with this free uh, foliage plugin on the marketplace. Uh, I'll do a I'll do a follow up video on this. I wanted you guys to know before this video goes on that I am aware of it. I did test it and I did have the same issues that I talk about in this video. That being said, it's a really cool plug in and I, I'll talk about it in another video. But um, I just wanted you to know because I because I talk exactly about what this um, functions that Unreal has natively that this plugin utilizes. But um, I just wanted everybody to be everybody to be aware that I'm aware it exists, and um, yeah, we'll talk about that at a later time. Anyway, on with the video. Okay, so I wanted to do something a little different this time and uh, have a conversation with you guys. I've been banging my head against the wall uh, with this issue for a while, and it regards this harvesting system I was building. I wanted to throw at you what my solution was, and maybe you could come at me with uh, what your experiences have been, and maybe you have a better solution. I'm really curious. Um, I'd like to know. So here it goes. Here's, here was my issue. I had a bunch of foliage that I wanted to be able to harvest. I wanted to be able to cut down trees, break rocks, do all these sorts of great things. And the general way that I was seeing most people do it, now this is pseudocode. I, I, this is actually not in my... Well, I'm in my project, but this isn't code I'm using or anything like that. Uh, but they would do something like they would have like a line trace. And then they would say, okay, I hit a component. I know it to be the uh, hierarchical, however you say that word. It's an instant static mesh with some cool added features like culling and all this sorts of cool stuff. But basically, it's your foliage. So you would do a trace, so you hit your foliage. And then once you hit it, to confirm you hit it, you would do the cast. Then you'd get your uh, hit item, which is the index of the mesh. So if you know if you've messed with instant static meshes, you know it, they're super efficient, and basically it does an all-in-one draw call. This is why I'm using them in the first place. One draw call to draw, and you can draw thousands of trees, and it's only the cost of one tree uh, graphically. Um, but well, let me just show you how they basically work. So let's say you wanted to remove it okay you could remove the instance so i chopped down the tree boom i removed the instance and i was noticing if i had a lot of trees i mean a lot a lot fully as instances and all this other stuff like hundred thousand something crazy like that it was making a big hit like when i would remove that instance it would cause a big hit and it makes sense so it was all under the same component and I thought, okay, it's under the same component. It has to redraw everything on your screen, all 100,000 of those trees or whatever. So I was like, I can see that's why it's expensive. I know what I'll do. I'll use multiple instant static uh, mesh components, and then that'll each component will only have like 1,000, and I wasn't taking a heavy hit with 1,000. No big deal, and I'll just have 100 of these components out there or whatever. Anyway, long story short, it didn't improve at all. It didn't matter how many components I had. Um, it was about the same hit. It was just horrible. It was a frame rate drop of like 10 to 20, which is just unacceptable. You can't have that sort of drop. So I heard people talk, and they're like, oh, they scaled down the mesh. So that's what this next one is. Uh, update instance transform and what they'll do is they'll take the transform so instead of removing it they'll just make it really small so you might want it to come back anyway and it's not going to have to do a bunch of you know calculations and sure enough it was a lot better it was significantly better but it was still a hit it was still costing me like five frames or something crazy like that and it was on other clients too I tried to do it on different, uh, like separate computers so I could make sure, okay, well, yeah, it's drawing off for this guy. Is it doing it? Yeah. It was hitting all my clients, which isn't cool. Some dude's cutting down a tree or breaking a rock and all of a sudden you lose five frames. So I was, I was like really upset. I tried everything I could think of, like, uh, just using actors or whatever. And actors were fine. There's no hit at all for an actor, but you can't have thousands and thousands of actors out there. The whole point of this system once, and I'm going to back up a little bit. The whole point of this system would be so that way you, 
take out one of my foliage uh, instant static meshes, I replace it with an actor at runtime, and then that actor could handle all the other things I wanted it to do. That the the tree would be replaced with an actual actor tree, which is that's kind of like the going thing that everybody does, right? Um, but uh, removing that actor was causing me problem or sorry replacing it with an actor just manipulating the instant static mesh in any way was causing the problems so then i looked and it was in version 4.25 of ue4 unreal engine 4 they came out with this uh new node it was 425 i think maybe it was 424 it was no one for it had to be 425 i'm using 426 right now so anyway they came out with this new one um set custom data value and real quick before i move on to set custom data value let me say something else about this update transform i'm doing this all in native and c plus plus and i noticed when i was following through the logic that this node if you set it small enough it will act like a remove instance anyway it does like a nearly nearly zero so if you just try to scale down to zero it's going to do the really expensive remove instance so bear that in mind i don't know what the tolerance was for the near nearly but if you took it too small it's just going to remove the instance so that's what i saw maybe they changed it i don't know but i'm not using either of these i went on with this set custom data value now what this does is it allows you to manipulate the material and runtime and with material you can do a lot of things you can even change locations with material now there's a caveat to that it's not actually moving its location. It's moving the lo appearance of its location. So things like collision and whatnot, they're not affected. Okay. So I'm going to run you through a real rough of kind of what I was doing. But basically, to sum it up, how it works is I'll do a line trace that has no blocking hits from instant static meshes. So it'll trace through and it will hit say four of them okay so i hit four traces with this trees because it's a multi-line trace by channel okay so i do this trace i hit the four trees i basically i find out which one's nearest and uh, i have a system a t array in the game state that says based off of its location and what it is and yada yada long story short it um will replace it with the actor they want and and when it replaces it with that actor um it's just bringing in the collision i'm not bringing in all the visuals i'm leaving up to the instant static mesh okay so it'll bring in this this actor and the actor will actually hold all of the collision so now my instant static mesh is just purely doing visuals and what i'll do is when that tree is ready to get cut down or whatever i just turn the visuals off i just i just turn I just, I'll just turn it off by sending it through a parameter value. So let me show you how it kind of looks. So basically, um, you got your instant static mesh. It comes through over here. You set your custom data value and there it is. Custom data value of one. How this ties up, if you go into your, uh, they changed how the modes worked in 426. It was throwing me for a loop go over into my foliage then I got my tree right here real important when you're setting this up since this is all new and this took me a minute why won't you go there okay you get your component class you're gonna make uh you're gonna see something else here you're gonna want to make a child of that uh, a child class of that right there and uh this is the one I made if you go to it okay so I open it up here, and the most important part about this, if you scroll down, instances, it's number of custom data floats. So basically, it's looking for one float, okay? You can't be real specific. It's only working in floats and the amount and the index. And the index is zero because there's only one in this array here. So the index is zero, and it's expecting this uh, one float. And so let me back up real quick, make sure I've explained myself properly. Okay, so that's my tree I got in there. So on this tree, I have a material. And in that material, let me open up the trees material. Okay, you're gonna want to 
type in per instance custom data and remember how I was talking about the index of that data well it's going to be lo oh, looking for that data now so per instance custom data okay and so you got it right there and hey and this just so you know this isn't meant to be a tutorial I'm not you know this is more of a conversation I'd be doing this live but I don't have high enough internet speed this is just me kind of talking it through what I'm doing and so it's using this per instance custom data value and it goes into the opacity mask and basically I'm hiding it that way so long story uh, the instant stack meshes are holding all visuals and the actual actors are holding all collisions now this presents a pretty complex situation and here's why I don't I'm not all lovey-dovey with my solution the, the reason being is is that I have to uh, account for anything that could collide with my tree not just harvest my tree so I got to think about pawns bullets vehicles which are also pawns and any time that thing any instance comes into contact with my uh, foliage my harvestable foliage anyway I have to say okay uh, maybe we're not going to mess with any of the materials, but we definitely want to have collisions. So as soon as you overlap uh, with the pawn, spawn in my actor. So I haven't done a lot of tests, but I have done some tests. And even spawning, and then and then I also got to clean these up, right? Because let's say you're in a, a vehicle and you hit, start hitting tons of trees, bumping into them all over. Well, you're spawning tons of trees too. Well, eventually you could spawn it, have a thousand trees spawn. So I have a cleanup system. So it'll basically go through, it'll hit these trees. They spawn in. And then after like five seconds to not being interacted with, they despawn again. Now that sounds a little expensive, but you got to think about what I'm spawning in. So, I mean, when you fire a, a projectile, you're spawning in something, right? Well, this is about this, probably less expensive because it's not moving. So you're spawning in. And you're not spawning in any visuals, remember, because we're letting the instant static mesh do it. So we're just spawning in the collision. And yes, there's a tick, which I have disabled. And I don't have any other logic other than the timer running in this tree, which it needs anyway, because there's going to be other simple calculations and data, mainly data. So when you harvest the tree, you know, oh, okay, you get 10 wood or whatever. So anyway, this was my basic system. Uh, I found it to be pretty efficient compared to the other system, but there's a lot of manual code I had to do a lot. And I don't like that because, uh, you know, who knows what I'm going to run into down the road, what I'm going to have to consider. I haven't gotten that far, but uh, I want to know if you guys like done removal or, uh, of of instant static meshes efficiently and like or not even removal the the appearance of removal i guess is what i should say has have any of you guys been able to successfully do that with let's say i mean i was getting up there with 150,000 instances because i got to think okay if one uh you know i have this one since all of the um components seem to somehow be connected I'm thinking, well, shoot, this is going to be not just trees I have to, this total number is, it's going to be rocks, it's going to be anything that I use that instant static mesh component for, no matter how many, how I divide it up, you know, if people talk about level streaming, well, I mean, okay, so you could do level streaming to an, a certain extent, but if you're doing a multiplayer game, the server is still going to be responsible unless you, each server, you get, you get into complexities here, but in general, the server is still going to be responsible for firing these things up. And usually in a multiplayer game, you don't teleport. So everything, every map that you go to, it's, it's going to, it's going to pop in. Haven't done a lot of level streaming, but what I, the tests that I did do, didn't show an improvement at all there even having because I, when i originally started out i thought okay i'm totally isolated to its own map and its own map will definitely have its own foliage component which means um you know and i even tried like an uh an actor 
with a an instant static mesh component in there and i tried it that way using multiple of those i wasn't really seeing an improvement i was really just seeing um the same hit pretty much no matter what and some people might say well that's just too many instances of anything and that might be right you know a hundred plus thousand is a lot i just like to see how efficient i can get things in the end, as you can see right now, my current map doesn't have any art on it. I don't plan on having that many things. I just want to get as ultra efficient as possible. That way I don't run into any bottlenecks down the road. Because, for example, if I would have started off by using the you know remove instance right away, I know that's a heavy hit. And had I not been scaling stuff up super large, that I may have never have known that... I was going to run into these problems. So curious to see what you guys have experienced. Uh, I plan on having more conversations like this. I find that uh, it, it's it's better sometimes even for myself just to think, think, think through these problems. Um, I haven't, you know, I'm not 100% solid on this method for my harvesting system, but I'm definitely leaning toward it. It seems to be the most efficient so far. Um, I was just going to do a scavenging game. It would be very, very, very simple. Just click on a bunch of, you know, cabinets and broken down cars someplace and find your resources. But eh, let's, let's push it, right? Uh, so anyway, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'll see you on the next one. And uh, like I said, this isn't meant to be a tutorial, so I wasn't trying to show you how to do anything because um, I myself don't even know the system all the way through. Um, there'll be more, there'll be more and I'll, and I'll update, uh, if I, if I do find a great solution. So anyway, see you guys in the next one.